Hello, this is Uncle Patrick. In the last episode, I showed you how I had an accident when traveling in Nantong, China. From the Nantong Hospital, I arranged myself to be moved to Huashan Hospital in Shanghai. They had a foreigner's ward where foreigners like me who do not have any family members around will be better taken care of. In this video, I will share with you my experience having my surgery done here and what I did after I was discharged from the hospital. This hospital is one of the best in Shanghai. I got a single room ward. The bed here is automatic, which means I no longer need to rely on someone to help me sit up or lie down. There are power supplies for my phones and laptop. There is even free Wi-Fi, so I can still work on my hospital bed. The extra bed is for a family member if I have one who wants to stay in the hospital to look after me. Since I don't have any, the hospital arranged for two retired nurses on 12-hour shifts to take care of me round the clock. <laughs> Meals are included and there is no choice. I just have to take whatever they serve me. According to the hospital, the food menu is decided by a nutritionist according to my condition and needs. The quality of the food is not bad, and the portion is more than enough for me. The total cost for staying here, including the food and the nurses looking after me, is about 8,000 RMB per day, which is about 1,300 US dollars. The nurse is drawing blood from me for the various tests required prior to the operation. Besides the x-ray that I had done in Nantong Hospital, I also need MRI scan to get detailed images on my knee. The surgery was arranged for three days after my admission into Huashan Hospital when my knee is not so swollen anymore. I couldn't bring my phone into the operation theater, but this is roughly how it looks like. I needed a general anesthesia for this operation. This is the state I'm in when I wake up after the operation. I remember I had to wait for about an hour outside the operation theater for the previous operation to finish. I was pushed inside at around lunchtime. Looks like the operation theaters are arranged back to back with different teams of doctors and nurses rotating for each operation. They attach something like a squeeze bottle with negative pressure attached to a tube that is inserted into my wound to suck out the fluid inside. The doctor told me that they can only remove it when no more fluid is coming out. The next three days are the most miserable period as I couldn't move and my knee was in pain from time to time. They gave me several different types of medication including painkiller by drip. The doctor shows me x-ray pictures of my patella post-surgery. Looks like they managed to tie it back pretty nicely. The operation was successful. Three days after operation, they are ready to remove the fluid bottle and change my bandage. The operation cost, including the materials used, is about 10,000 RMB. I think this is quite reasonable for a foreigner without government subsidy. The doctor gave me two months of medical leave from work. This is the first time I see the wound. It's about six inch long. At this point, I'm feeling much better and can start to work already. I have to inform my colleagues 
and customers about my injury and make alternative arrangements for someone to take over my work. Only one friend in Shanghai managed to visit me before they tightened the hospital visit control due to the new wave of Delta outbreak at that time. YouTube becomes my main source of entertainment during this time. I have some fruits sent by my friends as snacks. The back of my thigh is severely bruised from the internal bleeding due to the operation. I need to stay in the hospital for another week before I can be discharged. During this period, one of the physio doctors comes to do physiotherapy for me once a day. She first massages my thigh to get rid of the bruise. This is the result after one week. The bruise on the upper part of my thigh is now cleared. Then she uses a portable electrotherapy device to help me exercise my thigh muscles. The orthopedic doctors come every day too as a team to check on my wound and recovery progress. The two doctors in charge of the ward also come to visit me a couple of times a day to ask me if I need any help or have any discomfort. <laughs> The COVID outbreak in China right now is quite bad. All visitors need PCR tests done within the last 48 hours to be allowed to enter the hospital ward for visit. So I told my friends in Shanghai not to visit me and to wait for my discharge the following week. Meanwhile, I have to do a lot of exercise. I also have to make plans for myself on how to survive without any family members with me after my discharge next week. According to the doctors, I will not be able to walk for a couple of weeks. After that, I should be able to move around a bit with the help of crutches. I considered moving to a community hospital and hiring a nurse to look after me. However, it will be costly and the travel insurance will not cover this part of the expense. Seven days after my surgery, I'm discharged from the hospital. I decided to move to a hotel nearby so that it will be easier to come back for follow-up treatments. A hospital staff pushed me on a wheelchair to the entrance. A colleague came over to help me with the move. He booked a cab on app but he has to go outside to guide the driver to drive into the pickup point. It is a hot day and there is no shelter here. I booked a suite at a Holiday Inn. This is my workspace for the next few weeks. I hired a helper who sleeps outside here on the sofa. This wheelchair was borrowed from the hotel. Let me show you my bedroom. There is a TV which can be connected to my iPad to play the programs of my choice. The bathroom is just next to my bed. The helper helps to clean me up daily at the side of the bathtub. She also prepares a basin of hot water for me to wash my feet every day. I found her on the 85 Tongcheng app at a rate of about 300 RMB per day. This is how I go to the toilet. I have to first sit down on the edge of the bathtub so that I can take down my shorts. Then I will move myself to sit on the toilet bowl. I need to raise my leg to a higher level to be able to sit comfortably. So this wash basin comes in handy. I cannot move my left leg at all, so I need my right leg to help. That's it. Business done. The weekly hospital checkup visit is a major challenge for me. I have to book a premium car on the DB app, which is bigger and is easier for me to get into the back seat. This is the only way I can sit in the car as my left leg cannot bend at all. Due to the COVID outbreak at this moment, the hospital closes all its six entrances except for this one. 
Everyone has to kill to get in from here. That's why there are so many people here. We have to show our health code and travel code to get through this gantry one by one. Then I have to walk for about 100 meters to the other side of the building to get to the International Outpatient Department. The land area of this hospital is not that big, but it is still a major exercise and challenge for me on touches. There is another check for health code and travel code at the entrance of the building before the lift lobby. The international outpatient department is on the 8th floor. The ambience here is good and is not too crowded. After paying for the outpatient fees of about 2,000 RMB, I was pushed to see the physio doctor first, followed by checkup by the orthopedic doctor. On my second visit two weeks after my operation, the doctor removes my stitches. If you like my video and find it educational, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. My wound is recovering well and the doctor told me that I don't need to go back to change bandage anymore. I think this hospital is quite good overall except for its location being in the middle of Shanghai city center. The traffic outside is very congested and messy. It was quite an effort for me to get on my cab and it would have been even more difficult if we used the wheelchair. The wheelchair that I borrowed from the hotel does not have a leg support. This is the way I create the support by using one of my clutches. Now I just need the helper to move my injured leg up and I'm ready to go downstairs. The main reason I stay in Holiday Inn is that I have the IHG Gold Membership. They are offering me free buffet breakfast every day for the stay. My helper pushes me downstairs to the second floor restaurant for breakfast. She takes a video to show me what food they serve, and I will tell her what to get for me. Having good food is essential for my recovery. For lunch and dinner, I use the Meituan app to order food delivery. On one of the days, I got so tired of staying in the room that I asked the helper to take me out for dinner. This Sichuan food on sticks is one of my favorites. I had a good meal finally after such a long time. Thank you for staying with me till the end. In the next episode, I will show you what I do for physiotherapy exercise and my journey back home. See you in my next video.